I start by prepping the piece. The first thing I need to do is remove all the hardware. Now, just so you know, here's like a little disclaimer. There was no precious antiques harmed in this video. This is not real wood. I don't know what it is, um, but it is not wood. It's not even veneer. It's one of those pieces that you can get from TJ Maxx or Home Goods. So it's a mass produced, manufactured piece of furniture. <laughs> so just wanna let everybody know, I'm not going to ruin this piece. And I love working on those types of pieces because I feel like I can you know, freely do anything I want. There's no restoring here, it's just fun. Now I want to even out some of these cracks, so I'm using Dixie Belle's mud and I'm using a little spatula. It's just an arts and crafts spatula. I'm not going to be really specific on making sure everything is perfect on this piece because it's going to be more of an art piece. Um, so I'm okay. Like the wood has some um, distressing in it, like some, it's supposed to look like there are like an old wood. So there's some holes in it and uh, little scratch marks and stuff. And that was purposely put into this manufactured piece. Now, before adding any paint, I wanna add slick stick to the surface because it's not veneer. Um, it's not any type of real wood. I started using my roller, but you know, quickly realized I need to go get a brush because it wasn't gonna cover all those creases in the little design in the front. But I add two coats of the slick stick and I wait two hours in between the coats and then I just leave it overnight before adding my paint to it. I was really indecisive about what I wanted to do with this piece. I kept going back and forth with all these ideas. That's actually why I am covering the hinges with tape rather than taking them off because I ended up doing a blend of blues on the entire piece. And I'm not going to show you because I'm going to save that for another piece. It just wasn't right for this one. So I ended up painting over that with some white paint. If I was going to do what I'm doing now, which is custom, you're doing a custom color, I'm using a mix of Muscadine Wine, Peony, and Plum Crazy by Dixie Bell's Chalk Mineral Paint Line. If I knew I was only going to use a solid color on the piece, I would have taken the hinges off and painted the doors separately. But because I thought I was doing a blend, I needed it all together. So that's the only reason I taped off those hinges. <laughs> My ratio for this custom color is two parts muscadine wine, one part plum crazy, and about half a part of um, peony. I want this to be mostly muscadine wine, so I do end up adding a little bit more because it was just uh, too pink for me. I want, I didn't want it to be pink. I wanted it to be more like, um, there's this color that I saw on Pinterest called Marsala, and I wanted it to look like that just to get an idea of what it's going to look like on the piece i used my finger i was just in the moment and i dipped my finger and put it on the piece and once i liked what was going on i continued and after i mixed it for a really long time here's what it looks like now i'm going to use my roller and my water mister to apply the paint whenever i'm using the chalk mineral paint and i have a flat surface i love using the roller with the water mister because it reduces the brush strokes and this the finish ends up really smooth and because it's only one color it goes by pretty quick There's a tray on this. I did pull it out and painted that as well. 
and I left the inside of the piece as it was because it actually ended up matching. So I just did some touch-ups and I'll show you that at the end when we reveal the piece. Now that everything's dry, I apply a second coat. And here's where I get like really good coverage. I actually loaded too much paint on my brush, but it all works out in the end. I don't have to dip it again. Because the paint is still wet, it looks a little bit brighter. It The color deepens once it's dried. Now I'm leaning the piece so that I can get any little spot that I might have missed. And that includes like any of the creases where there's the white primer. I cover all of that with a little artist brush. And then my next step is to use Dixie Belle's Clear Coat in Satin in my paint sprayer. I'm gonna add two coats of that because my next step, I can't do my next step until I have the piece sealed. And that's, I'm gonna seal it again after but I just need two coats of sealer on it for now. And here I wanna show you, this is actually my second coat. And because I waited and I didn't wipe the nozzle on my paint sprayer, it came out and it sputtered and a bunch just shot in one spot. So I wanna show you that right away I just take a a dry clean rag and I wipe it right off and then I just go back to spraying so I don't wait until that sputter dries or it won't look right right away I remove it and this happens once in a while you just want to make sure in between coats that you are wiping your nozzle down so that nothing dries into it So here I'm adding Dixie Belle's Besting Wax in Brown to all those details on the front. I'm going to put, it's, it's going to go all over and then I'm going to take a rag and I'm going to wipe it back where I don't want it. But I put it everywhere at first. That's why I needed to add that sealer because if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to easily wipe it off. <laughs> It would just kind of stick to that chalk paint because it's so porous. But now that we have a satin finish on it, look how easy it's coming off. And the Dixie Bell's Bestang Wax is different from other furniture waxes. It's not an oil-based wax, it's a water-based wax. So I let it dry for 24 hours and then I can seal over it. I love this wax for decorative finishes, to make shadows and to, um, just like all these little details, it just makes them pop. So I don't use it for sealing the piece. I actually use the water-based sealer, but I do it, I use it for the decorative finish. And here you can, I wanted you to see the difference that it makes. This top section is done with wax and the bottom section, there's no wax. So look at how much those details, they pop, they just, they're so much more prominent and dominant and it makes a really big difference. So then I just continued down the dresser. I added all the wax, I let it just sit there and then I wiped it back when I was finished. And then another thing I like to do, um, I just added it a little bit to the rest of the front. Now I didn't add any of this wax to the sides and the top because they look great. I just wanted there to be a little bit more character and shadow. I wanted to deepen the color on the front. So you can do this by, you know, I just apply it. Um, I don't really, it doesn't matter how much goes on or how it looks when you apply it because you're gonna, 
you're going to refine the look with you could use a dry brush or you could use a rag and here I'm using a rag but I do also love using a dry brush to kind of move that wax around um, and to take some of that wax off so I just play around with it until I like the way it looks And at this point, I still didn't do these two top drawers, so I am gonna take those out and do them now. <laughs> That's why they don't look finished. And then I take my sprayer, once I have my wax on, and I'm doing two more coats on the entire piece to make sure that everything is sealed in. And that's after I let it sit overnight. So I would say I let it sit about 18 hours um, after I applied the wax, just to make sure that that's where I wanted it. And then I sealed it all in. So now my next step is to add the gilding wax. I'm adding gilding wax in bronze. I think that the, the dark um, Marsala color with the, the bronze, so this Marsala color, remember, was muscadine wine, peony, and plum crazy, but it just made this like gorgeous dark maroon. I think it would pair really nicely with the bronze. So I'm applying it with a just an artist brush because I did apply it with my finger and I felt like it wasn't as bright as I wanted it to be. So using a, I'm using a brush. I ended up using the original hardware. I just soaked it in a little container with vinegar overnight, all the pieces. And it went from being really dark and dull to this bright brass. Here's a reminder of what we started with. And here it is today. I used some painter's tape at the bottom just to make sure everything looked nice and clean. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you hit the like button and consider subscribing and I will see you next time with another furniture makeover.